Is that correct with you? Is that yes, okay? Yes, please, please, please go ahead. We have already crossed 10, 10 minutes of their time. <laughs> so I know how, how eager they are to pitch. So I, I understand that. And with that, I think we should uh, thank all the panelists here that have been part of this session. We have not had enough. So we are going to call you again <laughs> and we're going to have maybe a, a, a deep dive with each one of you separately because there's so much to learn from all of you, so much to gather in terms of what has been happening uh, in this space around the world. And, uh, you know, heart, heartfelt thanks for your spending your time with us. That goes out to Mr. Nath Nafo, uh, Michal, Michal uh, Abni, also to Krishna and to Professor Mahadev Jaiswal, all you. of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, and now we'll move to the next session. Uh, the next session, uh, we, we say it's a pitch session. Uh, it's an opportunity for five easily companies to uh, give the elevator pitch. And immediately afterwards, we are going to ask them maybe a question or two. And it will be an opportunity to later on spread the word that you, that these companies are interested in doing business with India and also moving into a B2B session that will follow the webinar. So I'd like to invite the first speaker, the first company, uh, Cybit, uh, and the CEO, Rui Tzu. Uh, Rui, are you ready? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Should I start? So, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, so good afternoon, or actually good evening, everyone. My name is Roy Zor. I'm the founder and CEO of Cybint. We're a cyber education company focusing on reskilling the workforce and upskilling the industry, specifically in cybersecurity. My personal background is coming from over a decade in the Israeli cyber unit, A200, where one of my main responsibilities was reskilling cadets with no prior experience to become cyber professionals in a matter of months. Now, in the context of cybersecurity and education, we know that cybersecurity is one of the biggest challenges we are facing, you know, with millions of attacks per day and trillions of dollars in damage. Well, India is a strong target of this. But while it sounds like a technical issue, actually the weakest link in cybersecurity is the human factor that's involved in more than 95% of all security incidents. So when we think about the human factor, we understand that we have two big challenges that we need to solve. One is the talent shortage. The fact that right now there are about 4 million unfilled jobs in cybersecurity. This is a challenge, but also an opportunity for many people to get into this industry. While well, Asia Pacific and India specifically are in the core of this challenge. And the skills gap with majority of organizations from small, medium-sized businesses to large corporations report that their employees are underqualified in cybersecurity. To solve this problem, Cybin first started as a training company, training corporations around the world. And then we evolved to being an ed tech startup, meaning developing learning, training, and simulation platforms based on our experience to create a bigger impact in scale. So our platforms are actually a combination of advanced content, interactive labs, threat-based updates. So it's a, it's a living and breeding system that keeps constantly updating with the relevant content. Uh, it has a new paradigm of training based on hands-on, learner center, career-oriented training versus something that's more dated. And based on this platform, we create a browser-based solution so the learning can be from everywhere at any time with a large set of labs and virtual machines and hands-on practices. So all the learning is very, very, um, I would say, intuitive and, and practical. Uh, with this platform, we launch multiple uh, solutions, multiple learning solutions from a boot camp that takes learners from zero to employed in only a few months. Um, and and we, we even see groups of refugees and un, underserved uh, populations that we train around the world. And with more corporate training that helps organizations to train their staff members from general employees to executives, to programmers, to uh, security professionals. In Singapore alone, we train more than 5,000 people in the last few months with high, high level of satisfaction. Uh, so we see that most of our partners are um, pleased with our solution and we are focusing on collaboration. So we are looking to partner with education institutions uh, and, and, and business partners in India to grow our offering as part of our building the largest education network globally. 
So really, thank you so much. I only have three minutes, so I'll stop here. And uh, I hope to be connected to you in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Roy. Uh, and I would like to first take the opportunity and uh, explain something to the audience, because you mentioned something that is very unique to the Israelic, uh, I would say, uh, a, and to the state of Israel and to the Israeli culture, uh, the fact that you know, no matter how high schools are good or bad, when you turn 18, yeah. you need to go to a mandatory uh, military uh, service. And in this, uh, in the Israeli Defense Forces, we also have cyber units and we also have electronic units. We also have uh, uh, the need for engineers, but they do not have the time to wait four years for you to get trained. So you take an 18 year old and you need within a three, six, nine months period to make him a cyber engineer or a, a computer engineer, etc. So this is something that uh, for people that do not know the state of Israel, this is something that is a matter of practice that's happening already for decades uh, for the very simple reason that we, the, uh, the, the, the jobs that need to be filled in the uh, in the IDF yeah. and uh, you, you need to take people also that are not trained necessarily high student uh, high school student that are not professionally trained in computer engineering and also to create for them so uh, the the term that you, men, you used from zero to employ, uh, employability uh, is something that is a practice uh, in, in the uh, military academies in Israel for all uh, types of professions, engineering professions and so on. My, uh, my question to you is when you adopt this model to places outside of Israel, aren't you competing head to head with universities? It's a, it's, a, it's a great question because it could be an alternative for university, you know, taking a, a shorter path that brings you directly to employment. But, uh, and, and it is, by the way, by, by some partners. But one of the reasons we chose at Saibin to partner with universities is that we actually say we at Saibin, we are not there to replace necessarily um, or, you know, to compete head, you know, directly with the universities, but we actually reach out to universities to vocational training companies, to colleges, to state-owned uh, training centers. And we tell them, let's partner. You already have the local reputation, the access to students, the establishment uh, that's been there for decades or hundreds of years sometimes. We will bring you these solutions and you can offer this in addition to your degree programs or you know, integrate it into your degree programs, whatever works best for you. And then you will not lose this opportunity to be, you know, relevant in this reskilling age. Um, so this is this is how we approach this. It's not directly competing, but actually partnering with universities. Wonderful. Okay, so definitely, uh, uh, companies that would like to hear more about Cybent, we have a B two B session immediately after the this webinar, uh, and I. Uh, and delightful that so many companies already have uh, secured a position for these uh, B2B sessions. So the next one up is uh, Cara Fontana. Hi, Cara. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How are you? It's uh, first of all, I, I just want to compliment uh, Roy on his presentation. It seems like a really very compelling uh, cause and also solution. So. Very happy to see that, to see that here as well. All right, I will get started. Let's just, sorry guys. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I am here to present to you all Tonara and how we are reimagining education I'm happy to be here because we see that there is a problem right now. Educators are struggling. Uh, you know, we know that it is really difficult to engage students these days. Uh, this is due to lack of motivation, 
empathy, you know, support to resources, general accessibility. Um, and now we're dealing with a whole new era of challenges uh, with uh, a pandemic, but also many, uh, many ways for students to be distracted uh, throughout their day. So we're looking to help teachers uh, manage their businesses, maintain student motivation, and also to track their impact. We're doing this with the means of technology. Uh, we see that in music education, especially, uh, there's this issue. And we want to use technology to empower these teachers. So many solutions out there are actually looking to replace teachers or to create shortcuts in learning. And we're really looking to harness the power of technology to help teachers connect, manage, and motivate their students. Um, these are the three pillars of our products and uh, the three big takeaways that I'd like you to take away from this presentation. So I mentioned that we're focusing on the music education market because these problems are the most prevalent there and also due to the size of the market. It's a big market and it's growing every day. Now we're doing this with two solutions. The first is Tonar Connect. This is a global marketplace for students to find the teacher or a learning group that meets their learning needs. And then those teachers can use Tonara Studio to manage their students and to keep them motivated through the means of smart assignments, uh, gamified practice and uh, progress tracking. Um, and right now we actually just launched this last year and we are currently serving around 1200 music educators with an annual revenue of $300,000. And we are looking to increase this rapidly uh, by 2025 and get to a 90 million revenue stream. And in terms of competitors for us, it is a blue ocean. Uh, there is no service out there or solution that can touch on all three of these pain points uh, in which we can connect, manage and motivate students. And actually I'm joined by an amazing team. Uh, we all share this vision and, and its underlying purpose to empower music educators and to keep their students motivated and to reduce churn. And over the next couple of years, we're looking to increase market share pretty significantly uh, with our Cornerstone product studio and also uh, connect the marketplace and to engage more students around the world. And we're looking to do this um, with business development partners, uh, building up brand defensibility, uh, through the means of content and global events. And we're actually seeking a round of three to five million uh, in the next year. So I've uh, kept this pretty short as requested. So if you guys have any questions, I encourage you to follow up with me or with our CEO, Ohad Golan. Um, and his information is here and I'm happy to also uh, share that in any follow-up discussions. So, Aru, which of the markets that you're operating in right now? We are actually serving um, a number of countries, uh, Australia, New Zealand, the United States is our biggest market, uh, but we're also localized uh, for Germany, Italy, Spain, Latin America, um, and also Brazil, actually, yes. Great, would love to talk to you about India, hopefully. Uh, about the possibilities <laughs> later. Well, thank you. Great, great presentation. Thank you. It, it thank seems you. that uh, that there are two uh, uh, ways forward for you with India. One is to look for investor. The second, look for market. So, if there is a strategic investor that can make the investment, but also yes. uh, uh, focus on the Indian market. I believe that the market in India is bigger than Germany. <laughs> Any day. Especially for music. Especially for music. Especially for music. I don't doubt that. <laughs> well, Kara, thank you very much. And uh, our next speaker will be Eyal Eshet from Speaking Pal. 
Hi, hi everybody. Thank you, Yaki. Happy to be here. Let me share my screen and dive straight. So I'm uh, Eyal, uh, I'm the CEO of Speaking Pal. And as Israelis, we believe that talent is the most valuable asset. And specifically, we promote talent by improving English. We use technology to improve the spoken English and we provide equal opportunities for all students. Why English? If I'm talking about talent, because English is the language of globalization, like what's happening uh, now for all of us. And if I speak English, I have more opportunities in, in modern life. The problem is that not all students get equal opportunities. And for that, we've developed a, a unique speech recognition technology for non-native speakers and a spoken English simulator, which I will not have time to demonstrate as I usually do. I uh, maybe mention one advantage out of many, uh, which is the confidence. When you, when you practice speaking in a safe, intimate, intimate environment, uh, you build your own confidence. When you have more confidence, in English, you actually pay more attention, do more homework. Uh, you are more willing to use the, the language uh, for your everyday uh, study, work, anything. And you move forward uh, immediately with the, with the skill. We won many, many uh, awards for innovation and technology in education. We are globally in many countries, including India. Um, we sell directly to consumers but also to ministries of education, institutions, uh, corporates. It is important to mention that we are not replacing teachers. There is no way to do that, uh, but we can empower them. We can give them a tool that uh, uh, can let the students practice uh, by themselves and the teachers can monitor what the students are doing. And then they can do what the computer will never be able to do. They can, uh, uh, go to the students that need a human intervention, some a human interaction and actually help the students improve while the other students can, can move forward or in the title, the personalized learning everybody are talking about. Uh, We're an Israeli company teaching English, right? So uh, we have a, a strong partner, one of the global leaders from the States that uh, is uh, uh, monitoring, approving our uh, English content, uh, the technology, we are working with uh, multiple ministries of education uh, uh, around the world. We have other products, I, I specified the first, the leading product, but uh, one of the interesting new products we have that was born out of the COVID is an online testing platform uh, using AI to power English assessment tests from home or from, from uh, uh, small groups uh, and automatically provide an English assessment for students for all the skills, including free speaking, free writing. Uh, and this is working from the last few months. Uh, we have teacher training online courses, test preparation apps and other. For all of that, as an Israeli company, uh, we have developed uh, a, a group of technologies to power our products. And we both license our own products and license our technologies for other ed tech companies around the world that are pro developing their own products but need the technology to power that behind the scenes. So uh, I think I got to the around the three minutes. I'm happy to be here and to cooperate with any partner uh, from India. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Yael. Uh, I remember that, you know, I actually have two questions for you. One, maybe you can answer, but the other, maybe you cannot, okay? <laughs> okay, that's maybe. easy. Not answering maybe. is easy. Second one, when is the next time you are coming with me to India? <laughs> oh, as soon as the skies are open, right? <laughs> but, but this is the one I can't answer, right? <laughs> yeah. But for the first question, uh, I remember that you uh, listened to your uh, pitch many times in the past you emphasize the understandability 
of the of the of the spoken word not necessarily the correctness to a specific grammar can you elaborate a little bit more yes, about yes. it's it's called intelligibility and the score when we have a, a, a speaking technology uh, for uh, practicing speaking or spoken language most people are actually uh, expecting pronunciation scoring and many companies are using pronunciation scoring engines uh, we found out very early that this is definitely not the course because uh, as an israeli i'm not speaking with uh, uh, any uh, native uh, american or british or australian accent and i will never do that and that's not my my goal so if my goal is to speak clear understandable english which is called intelligible intelligible english that's what we need the engine to to actually provide so our uh, uh, speech recognition engine for non-native speakers is giving me a score of intelligibility how clear my uh, my language is my spoken language is how easy other listeners will understand what i'm trying to say and it of course includes some uh, scoring of the pronunciation but not only so an accent is not uh, the only uh, thing and if i have a, a very heavy hebrew accent but people can understand what i say i can get a high score for my uh, spoken language well that's wonderful uh thank you very much Eyal. Uh, and again uh i uh encourage any uh, company that wants to do business with uh, speaking pal in in india to uh sign up for the b2b sessions and our next speaker will be Seth Heberman from Sense Education. Hi, uh, good morning. Let me share my screen with you. Good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm actually in New York City. As you can see, it's very early in the morning here. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about feedback. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a different view in the presentation because I think we have a perspective that's really important about um, the market in India and the types of capabilities that evolve out of, um, out of the Israeli market, specifically in things like artificial intelligence. Call faster, fairer feedback uh, for everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. We lost. Uh... Okay, um, so I'll tell a quick story. Last year on March 8th, when the world was closing down, especially the United States, uh, like many universities, the University of Chicago announced that all classes will be streamed. And the next day on the student Reddit board, this meme was posted. And it said, Netflix, $108 a year for streaming, Hulu, $120, Spotify, $72, and the University of Chicago, $57,642 a year for streaming. And this is like, this is the sort of story of education, both in the United States and in many places, which is this enormous cost associated with education, even if it's subsidized by government or things like that, the cost is, is incredible. And and it's not because of the content, right? Netflix spent $13 billion on content. Uh, Hulu spent $2.3 billion. It's not a content thing, it's about scale. And it's about not harnessing scale in, in, uh, in education the same way. Now, why couldn't you just scale education the way with Netflix? Well, I think we know the reason. Education is not just a one-way thing. It requires interaction. And what we look at sense is how do we scale those interactions? How do we scale the ability of a teacher to ask a student a question, a student to answer that question, a teacher to give feedback or evaluations or hints like that? And I think there's a, there's a model that education uses for scaling. And it's the one that we learned in the industrial revolution. Let's make things faster and cheaper, even if quality suffers. So what that mean in education? It meant mass production, multiple choice questions. We just had the, the, the gate exam in, in India to determine who can go to graduate school in computer science. It, it's a multiple choice exam in computer science, which is all about how to solve problems. But there's a new model about how to scale things. And that model is something informed by machine learning, by feedback, and that you see it in things like search and driving and shopping, that the larger it gets, the, the better the quality. 
And so what sense is about is taking that same idea, saying that actually scale is good. Scale can make our system smarter and faster and better, not have to dumb them down. So how do we do it? So what we do is we look at thousands of open-ended submissions and our algorithms look for common patterns that appear in the, whether it's a, a piece of code, an Excel assignment, anything that has some sort of convergent patterns, we find those patterns, we find enough of them that we can cluster them so that we can take those thousands of open-ended assignments and turn them into archetypes. Once we've turned them into archetypes, we take the type of feedback that a professor would give and we basically train an automated TA, TA. And that TA can answer questions 24 hours a day simultaneously from tens of thousands of students, give feedback on assignments automatically and reduce the amount of work uh, that, that happens. So what are our benefits? Holistic grading, we can automatically grade things, not just that whether you got the right answer or not, but whether you use the right methods, how creative were you? All the types of things that an instructor, if he was looking at everything, you know, each individual assignment would do, we do at scale. And, and, it, and that changes the, the nature of the work that instructors have to do because they can now focus on teaching and not reviewing and not sitting with stacks and stacks of paper. And the nice thing about it is it gets smarter over time. The more we look at, the more assignments we look at, the smarter we get. And our customers love our product. There's one a professor from Arizona State University said, I feel like I'm floating above all the student submissions and can see everything that's going on in the class and it's eye opening so that we get a sense of performance of the class that didn't exist before. And we've been, in, you know, we've won awards, we have patents, we have published scientific papers like everyone and we benefit everyone across the school. Students get faster feedback, more detailed assessments and things like that. Teachers do less work. They can get early predictions on student performance. Educational institutions can get more revenue. They can scale. They can take advantage of the large number of students. Corporations can get better ability to identify skills, uh, improve retention and content gets improved over time based on how it's performed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Seth. Um, and uh, I also appreciate the fact that you woke up so early in the morning in uh, New York in order to join us uh, over here. Uh, well, I my pleasure. I saw the, the ice cubes in your glass. So I believe that also for you, it's like 25 degrees centigrade outside, correct? <laughs> actually, <laughs> no, actually, it was it, uh, yesterday it was it was actually quite a nice day. So I went for a bike ride, so but I my, miss being in Tel Aviv right now. My, my question to you is, uh, a, what's your number one priority in India? Are you after universities, businesses? Uh, what's your business goal uh, in this? Uh, large... Here, I, so, so, you know, to us. Um, we think that, that India is, has, is, is an unparalleled opportunity because you have so much scale and data that the ability to deploy systems like ours, we could make the smartest systems in the world. I mean, for us, like we work with the largest university in Israel, Tel Aviv University. Okay, we have a class of 500 people. How about a class of 10,000 people or 100,000 people? There's no reason, it, you know, it's a... Education has always had this elitist sense that only some people deserve to have the best teachers and the best instructors. Imagine if the entertainment business worked like that. Imagine if only some people could see the Godfather, right? No, you guys can't see it. You're, you're not in the right. We want to make the best teachers and the best educators to, to amplify their skills and make them um, available across as many people as possible. My last company I sold to Comcast in the United States, it was an ad tech I went from ad tech to ed tech. And the idea always was drive performance. And that's what we think we can do in education. And I think India, it's like, if you asked me for a market for all of the things, because there's so much focus on STEM education, there's so much data and there's so much opportunity, you know, we would love to be there. So if they're, if they're institutions, investors, cooperation, um, get hold of us, drag us over, we'll come visit and we'll show you what we can do. Wonderful. Uh, I'll take you up on that set. Hopefully, okay. soon, whenever you come in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 
we need we, we need to to uh, arrange the the the, the uh, first delegation as soon as possible. <laughs> I'll be on the trip. I, I'm I'm vaccinated, so I'll be there. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you guys. <laughs> we are still in the line. We're still in the and I just wanted to point to. out, I, Diaki blocked me, but we have a, our colleague um, who's on this call. Uh, she's in the top corner, Kalpana. Kalpana waved to everyone. So she's one, of our, she's one of our academic specialists who lives in India and is helping us uh, refine and evaluate um, our learning models. So welcome to Kalpana. So yes, maybe I can have a chat with Kalpana on the side to understand sure. what you guys are doing and then take it forward from there. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, wonderful. So uh, last but not least, uh, we have uh, Misha from ThinkCap. Uh, tell us what you do. Uh, hello, everybody. I thank you for the opportunity to present. Let me share my screen. Uh, share screen. Here we are. Let's see. Yeah, so here's my presentation. Just a second. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm Michelle Ferguson from Thinking Cap Innovations. And Thinking Cap Innovation is a startup where a relatively young startup that developed voice application education for young children, teens, and their families. And here's my eyes. The two main advantages of using voice assistants in education. First of all, we get rid of the screens. Today, after a year of pandemics, I don't think I have convinced anybody how, much, how damaging screens can be for young children and how often little education value they can provide. And I'm speaking here as a father of as a four little kids. And the second advantage is a low price point of the devices. Today, Thinking Cap Innovation provide, can provide superb educational content for the whole class, classroom on a device that costs only $30. And unlike screens, our application makes you think, makes you reason, it makes you express yourself verbally. And it's fun because it makes you use your imagination. So let me talk about our products. So our first product is, um, educational math educational game that called Thinking Cap Math that helps elementary school students to practice and do fundamental math skills. And our game structures as a math competitions where students collect points while they compete against other math teams. We released this program about a year ago and from the beginning we received a very warm endorsement from the blind and visually impaired community, including the American Foundation of the Blind, uh, American Foundation of the Blind. Um, uh, we are working with major schools for, for the blind in the United States. We also have a very special relationship with uh, Amazon. They featured our product, our program on the first page of Amazon store already for a year. So that's also something very nice. Um, um, so now next, so now we are in the, in the field of blind students and our next stop to move to special education where we plan to work with kids who has troubles with reading and writing. And from there, we are planning to move to the regular schools. So that's about our math learning program. And our second program is a English le learning program. That's in, in its a Spanish version called Thinking Cap Spanish. And I'm super excited about this development. I truly believe if we find the right program, this can become the next Duolingo, seriously. <laughs> this program teaches uh, children as young as age five how to speak English via instruction in their native language. So that's something very special. Uh, this program is very engaging and fun. It's structured as a game where you inside you travel inside fairy tale and together with you, little red riding hood and ginger, ginger bread man. And you have conversation with them and they ask, it, they ask you a question, you respond to them, you repeat after Alexa. And on the way you also, there's gamification, your own coins and use them in the lessons. So we really, first, uh, so currently we release a Spanish version of the game, which teaches Spanish to English speaking kids in the US. We released just a month ago and we already have uh, more than 100 teachers who are interested to use our program in the classroom. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, I see my boots can fall. <laughs> okay, that's kind of... Oh, it's funny. That's the second. <laughs> okay, I thought that was un <laughs> unprepared. Yeah. Okay, Misha, so... You know, it's, it's, so, it's so lovely, you know. I wanted to plan something with my grandkids. So they will pop inside. And so now we have your daughter. That's so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have four of them, here, so they will come all as we talk. So. <laughs> So, so the bottom line to finish about uh, uh, learning English. So we are working now on translating uh, this program into English to teach English. And we start with Spain. We partner with a big company in Spain who started introducing us to school in Spain, um, starting, sure, starting with the next uh, academic year. And we are looking to practice in India. This program which runs on a device that costs should. It costs only thirteen dollars. It can teach young kids in India how to speak American English, while it does all explanation in Hindi, and soon in even more English, uh, in more Indian languages. So, Misha, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, sure, sure. You know, I think that I think that uh, uh, you are the only company that brought two presenters to this uh, session. Uh, so thank you for bringing your daughter as well. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, she, she probably will start a very early on a career in international marketing. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, so uh, and my understanding that you are primarily looking for the right partner in India. <laughs> Yeah, you know, exactly. We're looking for partners create, in India to introduce to India bring our products to so, school. Yeah, especially uh, in the know, places where there's such a need for quite quality instructions, where the missing teachers who can. So this product that costs only the this device that can come into school in a classroom, one device that costs only thirty dollars and sit in the classroom and help everybody in the classroom in the same time. Wonderful. Okay, so Misha, thank you very much. Uh, again, uh, we have a, a we are about to uh, complete uh, the webinar, but for some companies, we, uh, for all the companies, we have uh, B2B sessions afterwards. So uh, I believe uh, that uh, this is the time to hand it over to you, Sh uh, Sushma. Uh, before I do and, this, uh, Yaki, I would like to mention that um, if we can. Um, um, get um, the presentation that were made here today. We could uh, also circulate it to a certain um, shortlisted group uh, that we feel might be interested. Uh, because for example, for Michael's uh, products, I feel there could be a few people that might be interested in looking at this uh, as, as uh, complementary to their own businesses. So um, might make sense to actually, apart from the B2B, also share all of these. So we can then uh, try and connect to some more people uh, specifically. So that then maybe Michael could also uh, do a separate session someday for two, three people. And similarly, so, so, can, so can others also. Wonderful. So I uh, definitely encourage all these early participants to uh, hand over to me the PDFs and my, uh, make sure that the PDFs arrive to the right destination. Uh, all of you have my... Uh, WhatsApp or email connection, so send it over to me and I will prepare everything as a batch for uh, the SME forum and for the embassy. Uh, I think that's an excellent uh, idea. Um, and uh, before I hand over the, 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 the lead to Sushma, I want to thank very much the friends for the SMA Foundation for making this happen. Um, it was a wonderful uh, first experience we, that gave us a lot of feeling to, to do more and more. And uh, Natasha and Kamal, thank you very much for coming with this idea. Uh, and I cannot wait to arrive to Delhi again. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for that. Exciting, very exciting. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, you. we're waiting for you here, yeah, okay. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yaki, and thank you very much, uh, 
uh, all of our uh, friends from uh, Israel. Um, the presentations were indeed very insightful, very lovely, and I'm sure we are already seeing um, interest uh, in the chat box. So um, uh, today, uh, at the end of this webinar, um, I'm going to request uh, all the other companies who have booked their slots for B2B to stay tuned and uh, you could sign in for your uh, meeting rooms. And uh, for all our um, uh, members and viewers who joined us for this webinar, thank you very much for uh, being with us. Uh, I'm sure you also enjoyed uh, this session, uh, um, every bit of it. And um, we can't wait for the second webinar in this series. So I guess um, Yaki, uh, Dr. Yaki and uh, Ms. Natasha, we have to start uh, planning on that. Uh, thank you uh, once again um, uh, to the Embassy of Israel and uh, the EdTech Israel. Uh, thank you very much for all your support. And I thank uh, your entire team and my team at India SME Forum too to have made this uh, possible. So I'm going to invite uh, Mr. Kamal Rabha from uh, Embassy of Israel to um, uh, you know, give some uh, comments on how we are going to conduct uh, uh, the B2B and uh, whether there are any special directions or instructions you have in mind uh, for the B2B uh, companies to follow. So over to you, uh, Kamal. Thank you, Shushmaji. Uh, I would request all uh, Israeli companies and the Indian companies who have the B2B meetings uh, to a, a separate meeting link has been sent to your email IDs. I would suggest all of you to, uh, to, to switch over that separate uh, link. And uh, from there, we will take it forward. Uh, Ms. Bhavya from SME Forum will be uh, creating five separate rooms for the Israeli companies. And uh, every Israeli company will be having 10 minutes to have the meetings with their Indian counterparts. Uh, the B2B metrics, uh, the recent metrics has been shared on the WhatsApp group. Uh, I suggest you follow that B2B metrics uh, to, to keep a track on the, on the company, Indian company, which would be meeting you. And the profile of that Indian company has already been shared with you in the Excel file. Thank you. Where are they? Are they? You saying the separate link? Is that was that sent an email or? That was sent yes. on email, Bhavya. Yes, that was sent on email to all the five companies. So I guess we will allow five minutes uh, to close uh, this link and uh, for the benefit of our uh, Israeli companies to switch over to the next link. The link, the link is same, Bhavya, for all yes, the. Yes, the, the link shared is same. Yeah. So I would do one thing. I would, I would uh, copy the link and share it on the WhatsApp group also. Yes, or, or, you can share it right now. Uh, uh, from the WhatsApp group, yes. That's yeah, right. WhatsApp group. Yeah. Uh, guys, just keep notice that we're um, seven minutes late. So the schedule is postponed by ten minutes. All of this, uh, your meetings yes. are pushed by ten minutes. So. Uh, uh, just be aware of that, please. Okay, folks, thank you very much. It was such a pleasure being thank here. Thank you, Mr. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Thanks for joining thank us. You. And uh, uh, any other B2B requests from our viewers can be forwarded to Ms. Bhavya and Mr. Kamal Rabha. Their coordinates were already posted on the chat box. So we look forward to receiving more requests. So have a great evening and uh, thank you very much.